Hi everyone, my name is Brianna Nicole. I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when I was 18 months old. So Crohn's Awareness Day is on May 19th and who better get to interview my cousin Tommy. So to start, um, so Tommy, what is your diagnosis? So I was originally diagnosed with IBD um, and then after my first surgery, I was actually diagnosed with Crohn's. So I was actually misdiagnosed the first time. Wow. So what does IBD stand for? Irritable bowel syndrome. And then what's the difference? But it's actually irritable bowel disorder. So, you know, they're, they're, they're just IBD is irritable bowel disorder, but I actually have Crohn's. So. Got it. And then what's the difference between the two? Cause you said they misdiagnosed you. So are they very similar? Um, so yeah, kind of. Yeah. So basically they are similar. The only difference would be is like in the treatment. So they were treating me with the wrong medication in the beginning. And that's why I kept having complications. Wow. And if you don't mind sharing, do you mind sharing those complications? Yeah. So the way it started was I, um, I had like severe stomach pain it, that wouldn't go away for months. And, you know, finally I went to the hospital, they did a CAT scan. And when I first had the CAT scan, they, um, they saw that my colon had a fistula in my colon, which is basically like a small rupture, which was causing the pain. So they didn't know at first what was causing it. So they did exploratory surgery. Um, and then after the surgery, my first surgery was eight hours. Wow. So they took that section of colon out. Um, and then after the surgery is actually when I found out that I had Crohn's because they took a biopsy, like a piece of my colon and they, you know, they tested it. And it was confirmed that I had Crohn's. Um, and then, you know, I went from there. Wow. So what exactly is Crohn's? So Crohn's is an autoimmune deficiency. So basically what, you know, the way that I, it was explained to me is that um, my body is basically attacking itself. My body thinks that there's something wrong in my colon. So it's attacking my colon, but in reality, there's nothing wrong. So it's actually my body doing damage to itself. That's, you know, wow. in, that's what autoimmune really is, you know? Yeah. Wow. I mean, I could just totally relate because even with diabetes, it's my pancreas. So my yeah. body's attacking my pancreas. And just like you with my pancreas, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's yeah. just the body deciding to attack it and then just like you it's now like you have to fill in the role of an organ which is your colon and you know doing right. the work to take care of that we're the same thing with diabetes where you know we also have to do the day-to-day -day tasks um to really fill in that role and it's definitely a lot of responsibility for sure um right. so i did want to ask when you were diagnosed with ibd um if you don't mind me asking how long ago was that yes yeah, so i was misdiagnosed but it was shortly after that I went to the hospital. So it was, it was within the same year, but it wasn't until I had the surgery that they realized I was misdiagnosed. Got it. And then back to your timeline. So you were misdiagnosed with IBD at the age of 25. And yep. then when were you diagnosed with Crohn's? Uh, it was also when I was 25, but it was probably about six months later. So within those six months, they were trying to treat me with IBD medication and it just wasn't working obviously because I didn't have IBD. I had Crohn's. So until they did the surgery, you know, then once I started the other Crohn's medication, um, you know, things got better, uh, but it, it wasn't perfect. You know what I mean? It's never, so with Crohn's you go into remission you're never cured, you know? So I'll, I'll always have Crohn's the rest of my life and I'll always have complications. But fortunately the past year and a half recently, I've been in remission. So it, it's been good, but at any time I could go back to having flare ups, you know? And what exactly is a flare up? 
So a flare up, the way it was explained to me was basically a flare up is inflammation in my colon. So my body is trying to react to something that's really not there and it inflames my colon. So it's trying to fight away something, but basically it's just causing so much inflammation that it causes, it could cause constipation, diarrhea. Um, mainly it's just very, you know, a lot of discomfort in my abdomen and it's like very extremely painful, like extremely. When a flare up happens, um, mm -hmm. is it that you may be done? Is it maybe like something that happened during the day or does it kind of randomly like happen? That's the crazy part about the disease. It's just literally I could be, completely fine one day and then I could wake up in the middle of the night with severe pain with a flare-up you know it doesn't you know the other issue with Crohn's is there's no unfortunately they don't really know yet what causes Crohn's disease they have a lot of ideas you know possibly diet could be one of the reasons um environmental reasons they they use um but they really don't know so when i was for my before my first surgery the doctor that i originally had wanted me to go on basically a vegetarian diet to cut out any type of meat so that didn't improve my situation at all because i tried it for the first six months and it wasn't it wasn't what i was eating was the issue it was basically that they were using the wrong medication to treat, you know, what I had. And I do want to ask, did you know anything about Crohn's disease prior to your diagnosis? Did you know anybody with the disease? Have you heard of it before? I've never, literally never even heard the word Crohn's. I had no idea what it was. Wow. And honestly, I could say the same. The only way that I know about Crohn's is honestly because you were diagnosed with it. And again, it's something I don't, you don't often hear about it, you know? Unfortunately, no. I feel like there needs to be more awareness about the disease and also the symptoms that surround it as well. Because again, it's something that's not really talked about. Um, and then what did the education look like for you? So when you were diagnosed with Crohn's, um, how did the doctors educate you? How did that learning curve happen? And what did you have to do? So after my first surgery, which was about 10 years ago, um, they really didn't give me too much information. They said, if I take the medication, I should go into remission. Um, and for probably about, I don't know, I would say two years, I was pretty good, but I had some discomfort here and there, you know, nothing too severe, just, you know, taking medication, you know, watching what I ate, all that stuff. Um, but then it gradually slowly started to get worse, like the, the pain and all the symptoms that come along with it. So, um, you know, fast forward 10 years later, I actually had to go for another surgery, which be, would be my second surgery. Um, and it was actually the same thing. It was, um, I had a, a partial rupture in my colon. So they had, a, but this time, fortunately, they knew what, you know, what I was diagnosed with being Crohn's. And they also knew what they were going to do with surgery. Like the first surgery was just like exploratory and they didn't know exactly what was going on and what they were going to do. So I went in the hospital. Um, they did the surgery. Uh, I was in, when I was in the hospital recovering, they, I actually unfortunately went septic. So when I went septic, I uh, was in the hospital for about anywhere. I, it, like, so I was there for two months originally, then went home, was still feeling sick and had to go back to the hospital for another couple of weeks. So I was in the hospital for a total of like three months with the recovery. But fortunately after that, um, I could finally say that I'm in, you know, some type of real remission with, with the doctor who did the surgery, he changed all my medications and it really like, you know, seems to be working. But unfortunately with this, like 
at any time I could have another flare up, but they're aware of that. And what they, you know, they would try to change the medication and hope that the change would keep me in the mission. Yeah. Um, so a little bit about your second surgery. So at that time, correct me if I'm wrong, that was during COVID-19. Um, sure. You also have a beautiful daughter named Chloe at home. And at the time, yeah. how old was she when this was all happening? Uh, it's kind of, to be honest with you, it's all kind of a blur. Um, but she was about six months old. Wow. And then also yeah. Tommy does have a wonderful wife at home too. So I'm sure that definitely took a mental toll as well. Not only physical on you. Yeah, it, it definitely did. But you know, Christina has always been there for me. So yeah, I give her credit. I give her credit with dealing with it. <laughs> so in regards to that, so I would say she's definitely a major support system for you. Can you say that having a support system at home is crucial, especially when oh. This? Of course, of course, especially with my daughter, you know what I mean? She took care of her. She took care of me. You know, she was a, a big part of my recovery, not only when I was in the hospital, you know, when I came home, because even when I came home, I, I mean, I still had difficulty walking. I still had, you know, because I have my scar basically goes from the bottom of my chest all the way to my belly button. Wow. So like, you know, they really, it was a large scar. So like the recovery time was, you know, I was in the hospital for three months, but then I was also recovering at home for about another month. So it was a long process. Yeah, well, absolutely. So crazy, just everything as a whole, but no, it's amazing. Like what you said, just the support system, I think is so important. Like I could just totally relate in a way where like, at least with me with diabetes and when we have those hard days of days where you just, you can't control it. I think it's so important to have just a support system altogether. So I can't agree with you more, especially when you were going through a six month old COVID-19, all those restrictions. And I don't know about you, if you had a lot of fear around COVID-19 because I did, because when you hear autoimmune disease and COVID-19 in the same sentence, you just know you're at risk of, and it's almost like the unknown. Yep, of course. So, well, again, I have to give credit to my doctor, my surgeon, um, because they knew that and COVID-19 was so still so new, mm -hmm. they actually placed me in um, a cancer section of the hospital just because they consider that to be the cleanest section you know, because the risk of patients with cancer. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I feel like that kept me safe in the hospital as well as, you know, the staff knew what I was going through. So they took extra precaution, but yeah, it was very scary. So when I went septic, when I was in the hospital, when I first, you know, I wasn't sure what was going on. Basically what happened was I, you know, I got, I got an extremely high fever when I went septic. So right away, the first thing that went through my head was that I had COVID, oh you know, and then to have recovering from surgery, also having autoimmune disease, and then, you know, possibly COVID, it was, you know, it was a scary thing for sure. But luckily I tested negative for COVID. Um, and then they did some, you know, blood work and all that. And they basically realized that I was septic, which is, you know, um, when I went septic, it was, um, they, in my blood, there was a, a bacteria that was causing me to go septic. But fortunately, um, they started me on very strong antibiotics and I was on them for about a week. Mm -hmm. And then finally, after about a week, my fever started to come down. And then, you know, I started to slowly feel a little better, but it was rough because I had pain from the surgery like recovering from the surgery, as well as the fever and everything that comes with being septic, you know, so and it was tough. Septic exactly mean? Like, what does septic mean? So I'm not, uh, I'm not a doctor, obviously, <laughs> but um, what I believe it is, is septic is, so uh, it's some type of bacteria in your blood from having the surgery. So it basically causes an infection in your blood. And it's, you know, at the time, you know, they want to keep you as calm as possible in the hospital, like, cause you know, they don't want to get you upset or whatever. Mm -hmm. But 
I found out after, you know, it's very, very dangerous to become septic. Wow. And it's like, you know, it's, it's not a good thing, but fortunately the antibiotics did what they were supposed to do, you know? So. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, definitely a scary thing. Um, so what is the biggest misconception about Crohn's? So I, what I think the biggest misconception is a lot of people always ask me, Oh, does it, how are you? Does your stomach hurt? Is everything okay? And yes, it has a lot to do with your stomach, but Crohn's affects your entire body. Now, this is something that I learned after my second surgery. You know, when my first doctor, I was, I didn't, he didn't tell me that, you know, I, I thought it was just had to do with my stomach and my colon, but because it's an autoimmune disease, it affects your entire body. So fortunately, I don't have too many other symptoms. But there are people, you know, that have um, joint pain, um, skin issues, uh, you know, there's a bunch of other things that come along with Crohn's. Um, but, you know, with my medications, they help a lot because I take a mild steroid to keep all, you know, to keep my joints from inflammation in my joints, all that stuff. And I also take a medication for my colon, you know, so Got it, it yeah. helps a lot of times when I hear Crohn's, you also hear the word stoma. So what is a stoma? Is a stoma something that you use to care for Crohn's? And if you don't mind maybe explaining what that is. Yeah, so a stoma basically is a temporary way for them, it could be permanent or temporary, um, for them to basically take a section of the colon that is giving the person the issue and basically ending the colon before that section and making the, an incision in your abdomen and making the, um, I guess, you know, stool come out of your, your abdomen before it goes through that part of the colon. It basically gives that part of the colon time to recover from all the damage, because that's what the inflammation does to your colon. It damages the lining of the colon. So if it, you know, if it continues to do that, that's when you get a rupture that, you know, that's what happened to me because so much of the inflammation, it, it causes it to rupture. So they want to basically give that section of your colon a break and time to heal. So they're basically bypassing that section, you know, to make it to make it heal, you know? Wow. By far my biggest scare was when I was in the hospital and I went septic. It was like, it's weird that I think about it now. Um, it's almost like I forget what happened, but I don't, but it's just like, it's hard to explain unless you've been through it. It's basically like I, I, my mind puts it past me but at the time it was, you know, very extreme case because I was actually sent to the ICU. Um, I was quarantined, you know, they didn't know if I had COVID, they didn't know what the case may be. So yeah, it was definitely by far my biggest scare. And also too, for them to room you in the cancer section, that right there, I think just says a lot too, just about your immune system and just like the danger towards you as well. So. A hundred percent. Yeah. And then even like, you know, before I went to the hospital, COVID had already started. Um, and at that time I knew that it was an autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you put on the news, when it first started, it says, Oh, people who have autoimmune disease are at the highest risk. Yeah. So that was also scary. And then the combination of me having no choice, but to go into the hospital where COVID patients were being treated, it was just, you know, it wasn't a good, it wasn't a fun time. No, nah, well, we're very happy you're okay. <laughs> and that, you. you know, you're strong and you know, you made it through yeah. for sure. What are some of your biggest challenges and how did you overcome them? So I guess like when I'm in remission, like I am now, it's not too difficult. Um, basically, I just have to make sure I stay up on my doctor's appointments, my blood work, um, my medication, all that stuff. But prior to that, when I was having flare ups, it was just, it was, it's ba it basically becomes debilitating 
to the point where like before I went into the hospital, I couldn't get out of bed. You know, I couldn't, it was so painful that all I did was lay in bed. And that's when finally Christina, you know, I'm a little stubborn when it comes to that. You know, I always think that I, I'll get better on my own by taking medication or, but fortunately Christina kind of, uh, you know, got me into the hospital and she was the reason why I'm, I am where I am now. Wow. And I did want to ask you, when it comes to a support system, I know you mentioned briefly how like maybe people who don't have so much knowledge about um, Crohn's may ask like, how's your stomach? Or maybe not ask the questions that really could relate to it. So what are some questions or really more so how can, um, what would you recommend to somebody who is maybe caring for somebody with Crohn's or has a Crohn's family member and what's the best way to support them? Um, I guess the best way to support them is to just be there for the decision that they make. Um, just because it's like, it kind of, unless you know the feeling, it's hard to explain what they're going through. Cause like I said, it's not when you're, when I'm having a flare up, it's not just my stomach hurting. It's more than that. It's, it actually, I'm in like, before I went to the hospital, I was in so much pain. I lost my voice oh, wow. because of the pain. Like, so basically I would say that just be there for the person and let them make their own decisions to a certain point. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. I actually remember doing a little bit of research and I actually found this meme and it says something along the lines, like kind of like respect my decision. If I don't want to go out tonight and I'm not feeling well, it's I'm not feeling yeah. well and you know, let me be kind of I thing. Agree. So I agree. Yeah. 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 It kind of like when I'm having a flare up though, cause the flare ups, they could last anywhere between, I would say a week and six months like I've had the last flare up that I had it was basically six months long and it was ruining not only you know me and Christina's relationship but relationship with everyone you know in my life like even my business suffered because I wasn't able to you know return phone calls go out and do the work it's just it, it affects every part of your life you know yeah, no, definitely. I think that's why too. It's, I think it's so important, you know, for family members and friends to just learn more about it and what the individual is going through. Again, I don't think anybody can ever know exactly what you're going through unless they have the disease. And I say the same thing about diabetes too, where you can only explain so much, but unless you have it, you'll never understand. And there's always going to be so many different misconceptions and stereotypes about it but unless you just ask the individual just simply hey how can I support you and they'll just let you know how you can support them so exactly. no, that's some really great advice that you're giving so you have a business you have a wife and you have a daughter so any advice do you have for anybody who's watching this, um, who's maybe newly diagnosed with Crohn's, who's learning more about Crohn's, or maybe who has Crohn's for some time and just needs that extra support? So really, any advice can you give to anybody who is watching? Yeah, definitely. So basically, what I would say is um, I learned it through the mistakes that I made. Um, what I would say to anyone is put your, it sounds selfish, but put your health first because without your health, uh, you, you know, you can't help or do anything for anyone else. I, you know, because I was trying to put my business, my daughter, Christina, everyone before my health and it, it caught up to me, unfortunately. And it got to the point where I couldn't help them or myself, you know? So like I, I would say, put your health first and then everything, you know, after that comes, will fall into place. Yeah, I think that's amazing advice just because it's not an easy thing to do, I'm sure. I'm sure I think maybe a lot of guilt can go into it, just being a parent alone, putting exactly. yourself first before a child even could be yep. very difficult, but just your mindset alone, really looking into the future, this is going to be hard short term, yes, but long term, this is the best decision for my wife, for my daughter, for my business, for my family. So that is amazing advice, for sure. 
Yeah. Awesome. And is there anything else you want to add? Um, not really. I mean, basically, if someone's going through it, I would say don't be stubborn like I was, because to a certain extent, I made it worse for myself by waiting to go to the hospital or waiting to get a second opinion. I mean, and that's another big thing. I trusted the, the, my first doctor to trust that he, you know, he knew everything about the disease. He knew how to treat it, all that. But the, when my life really changed for the better was when I saw my, you know, the second doctor who did the surgery and he was really able to, you know, customize, you know, a plan for me instead of me just being a number. So, you know, going back to that, I would say, if you have to, don't be scared to get a second opinion, you know, from another doctor. Yeah, no. Well, that's some great advice. Um, I want to say thank you for taking the time to do this. I'm sure it's not easy just being so vulnerable with everyone. But however, I know for a fact your story is going to touch others. There's so many people out there who can relate to us and more so relate not only on our victories, but our struggles. And again, thank you for being so vulnerable. Um, if this is your first time here, welcome. Um, if you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing below, clicking that like button, and I do hope to hear from all of you soon. Thank you.